नमस्ते बिटिया हमेशा खुश रहो बिटिया मैसेल्फ जेवीएन डॉक्टर रवि जैन एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर एंड एच डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ प्रैक्टिस ऑफ मेडिसिन एंड फैकल्टी ऑफ होम्योपैथिक साइंस एट ज्योति विद्यापीठ वुमेंस यूनिवर्सिटी जयपुर In this series of lectures, we have been discussing about the various disorders related to the elemental tract. In the last lecture, we have discussed about peptic ulcer, and in today's lecture, we are going to discuss about another important topic that is pancreatitis. Pancreatitis, as the name suggests, is the inflammation of the pancreas. It happens when the digestive enzymes start digesting the pancreas itself. It can be acute or chronic. The pancreas secretes around 1,500 to 3,000 mL of isoosmotic alkaline fluid uh, with pH greater than 8 every day, containing around 20 enzymes. Now, the regulation of the pancreatic secretion. Regulation of the pancreatic secretion is done by the gastric acid that is stimulated, that is the stimulus for the release of secretin from the duodenal mucosa or the S cells. It stimulates the secretion of water and electrolytes from the pancreatic ductal cells. There is release of cholecystokinin (CCK) that is triggered by the long chain fatty acids, essential amino acids, and gastric acid. Cholecystokinin evokes an enzyme rich secretion from the acinar cells in the pancreas. The parasympathetic nervous system exerts significant control over the pancreatic secretions. The water and bicarbonate secretions are heavily dependent on the hormonal effects of secretin and, to lesser extent, CCK. Pancreatic secretion secretes amylolytic, lipolytic, and proteolytic enzymes into the duct lumen. The amylolytic enzymes include the amylase. The lipolytic includes the lipase, and proteolytic includes the trypsin and chymotrypsin. There is an autoprotection mechanism of the pancreas where the packaging of pancreatic protease in the precursor proenzyme form takes place. The synthesis of proactive protease inhibitors. Chymotrypsin C can lyse and inactivate the trypsin. Now let's start with acute pancreatitis. Acute pancreatitis is an acute uh, condition of inflammation of the pancreas with the annual incidence that is ranging from 13 to 45 per 1 lakh population. Acute pancreatitis results in more than 2 lakh 50 thousand hospitalizations per year. Etiology of acute pancreatitis includes the gallstones, alcohol, endoscopic, nitrocrate, cholangiopancreatic therapy, drugs, trauma, and post-operative condition. Acute pancreatitis varies from intestinal pancreatitis, that is, uh, in which the blood supply is maintained, uh, self-limiting, to a necrotizing pancreatitis where the blood supply is interrupted. There is autodigestion, that is, currently accepted pathogenic theory of Acute pancreatitis. Pancreatitis results when proteolytic enzymes, example trypsinogen, lipolytic enzymes, are activated in the pancreas as in a cells rather than the intestinal human. The activated proteolytic enzymes, especially trypsin, not only digest the pancreatic or uh, peripancreatic tissues, but they can also activate the other enzymes. Now, what is the pathogenesis of acute pancreatitis? The pancreatitis is a disease that uh, evolves in three phases. There is initial phase, there is second phase, and third phase. Initial phase is characterized by intrapancreatic digestive enzymes that are activating the acinar cell injury. The second phase involves the activation, chemoattraction, and sequestration of the leukocytes and macrophages in the pancreas, resulting in enhanced intrapancreatic inflammatory reaction. The third phase is due to the effects of activated proteolytic enzymes and cytokinins released by the inflamed pancreas on the distant organs. It causes proteolysis, edema, interstitial hemorrhage, vascular damage, coagulation necrosis, fat necrosis, and parenchymal cell necrosis. The clinical features includes abdominal pain as the major symptom of acute pancreatitis. The pain varies from mild discomfort to the severe and constant incapacitating distress. Pain is steady and boring in character. It is located on the epigastrium and the periumbilical region, and may radiate to the back, chest, flanks, and lower abdomen. There is nausea, vomiting, and abdominal distension due to the gastric and intestinal hypermobility, and chemical peritonitis. These are also the frequent complaints. In the physical examination, patient is distressed and anxious. There is low-grade fever with tachycardia and hypotension. Two signs are observed in case of acute pancreatitis, which includes Cullen's sign and Turner's sign. 
In the Cullen sign, there is faint blue discoloration around the umbilicus due to the superficial edema and bruising in the subcutaneous fatty tissue around the umbilicus. In the Turner sign, a blue, purple, and green brown discoloration in the flanks is a sign of retroperitoneal hemorrhage. Let me show you the picture of both these signs. On the left side, there is Cullen's sign, there is the bluish discoloration around the umbilicus. And the, on the right one, there is Gray Turner sign, which has bluish discoloration on the flanks. Now the lab diagnosis of acute pancreatitis. In case of acute pancreatitis, the serum amylase and the lipase values are three to four times increased above the normal level. There is leukocytosis with uh, 15,000 to 20,000 leukocytes per microliter. Hyperglycemia is common. Hypocalcemia is seen in around 25% of the patients. Hyperbilirubinemia, which includes serum bilirubin more than 68 millimole or greater than 4.0 mg per dl, occurs in around 10% of the patients. There is hypertriglyceridemia that occurs in 5 to 10% of the patients. CT abdomen can be done. The diagnosis of acute pancreatitis is done by two of the following three criteria. Number one, typical abdominal pain in the epigastrium that may radiate to the back, threefold or greater elevation of the serum lipase and amylase level, and third, confirmatory findings of acute pancreatitis on cross-sectional abdominal imaging. The differential diagnosis of acute pancreatitis includes the perforated viscous, especially the peptic ulcer, acute cholecystitis, and biliary colic, acute intestinal obstruction, mesenteric vascular occlusion, renal colic, inferior myocardial infarction, dissecting aortic aneurysm, connective tissue disorders with vasculitis, pneumonia, and diabetic ketoacidosis. The management of acute pancreatitis includes 85 to 90% of the cases with acute pancreatitis are self-limited and subside spontaneously within three to four, seven days. So this is basically a self-limiting disease. The management of acute pancreatitis begins in emergency ward. There is aggressive fluid resuscitation. Intravenous analgesics are administered. Hemodynamic monitoring, management of necrosis and organ failure. So this was about acute pancreatitis. Now we come to the chronic pancreatitis. The chronic pancreatitis is an inflammatory disease that is characterized by fibrosis and destruction of the exocrine pancreatic tissue. It is characterized by irreversible damage to the pancreas. The etiology uh, for chronic pancreatitis includes alcohol, that is the most frequent cause, and in adults, the etiology is unknown. There is another uh, other factors uh, which are represented by TIGAR O. T stands for toxic metabolic cause, I stands for idiopathic, G for genetic, A for autoimmune, R for recurrent, and severe pancreatitis, and O for obstructive pancreatitis. The signs and symptoms of pancreatitis include pain, is, uh, that is the cardinal symptom, Pain is better by leaning forward in alcohol consumption. There is weight loss, steatoria, and malabsorption syndromes. In the lab investigation, there is no specific uh, lab test for chronic pancreatitis. Serum amylase and lipase levels are normal. Serum bilirubin and alkaline phosphatase may be elevated. Small bowel biopsy is useful with impaired glucose tolerance that is present in more than 50% of the patients. The imaging includes plain films of the abdomen reveal pancreatic calcification. CT, MRI, endoscopic ultrasound and pancreatic function tests can be done. The treatment for chronic pancreatitis uh, includes, it is aimed at controlling the pain and malabsorption. Surgery with ductal decompression may control pain. Subtotal pancreatectomy can be done. Low fat diet and pancreatic enzyme replacement can also be done. Antacids can be given, which includes omeprazole, sodium bicarbonate, and insulin to control the serum glucose level. So this was all about pancreatitis. We have discussed about acute and chronic pancreatitis. Homeopathic management can be done based on the symptom similarity. So this was all about pancreatitis. I hope you must have understood the session properly. If you have any query, please mention in the comment box and I'll try to resolve it. So this was all for today. Thank you very much. Have a good day.